Today, we're grinding up some sausages and getting down with food as performance art with Erin O'Brien on Cooking with Pride. The kitchen has always been a place for people to come together and share their stories. I've invited a few of my favorite food friends from the LGBTQIA community to share their stories about cooking, connecting in the kitchen, and creating recipes that inspire others. This is Cooking with Pride. You want to get slices about an inch or two around. It really doesn't matter how big they are because they're going to go in the grinder and everything's going to get chopped up into little bits. This is just the proper size for the grinder. Yeah. I mean, you could put in this whole piece, actually, because this grinder is like one horsepower. Mm -hmm. So if you ever run into a deer, give me a call. <laughs> I got you. Uh, do you want to try cutting some? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me cut a little piece off for you. So slicing it across this way, and then okay. you can break it in half and slice it across that way. Okay, so like this? Yep. We're making sausages today. What is the story behind these sausages? Well, this sausage is called Pork My Buns Quadruple X. It's similar to a, a red roast pork, but in a sausage. So the Quadruple X is also because in Vietnamese, sausage is sosit. And sa siu is the char siu um, in Vietnamese, so that's four X's. But it's also in honor of a friend of mine, Christopher Lee, who's an Asian-American filmmaker. Actually, when I first met him in the early 90s, he said he was making tranny porn. I was like, wait, mm. what? Mind blown. I didn't even know such a thing existed. Um, which, you know, this was the 90s, so he's self-identified trans guy. Um, he started the San Francisco Transgender Film Festival. Oh, wow. Um, which used to be called Tranny Fest, but... It's not as appropriate, so, yeah. especially for folks who aren't self-identified trans folks. So uh, in 2012, he took his own life, and uh, his friends went to go pick up his remains from the corner, and they were surprised to see on his death certificate that it said female. And they were like, we just showed you everything. He's lived his whole life as male. Why would you misgender him in death? And they actually organized statewide in California to pass the Respect in After Death Act so that people, no matter what their gender identification is in life, would also have that honored in death. Yeah, that's such a big deal because I can totally see something like that happening. Like, oh, the person's gone and we're just gonna take this major part of their identity away from them. Like, it doesn't matter, they're not here anymore. But for that person, and especially the people that that person is leaving behind, you, like, love these people who are no longer here in this life with us, and it matters. Yeah, and the coroner's just going off what parts they see. So exactly. they don't know what life he's lived. They don't yeah. know that he was such a leader in the trans community and that he had like started this film festival and was this amazing Asian American filmmaker. And let's be real, in the 90s, we didn't have Asian Americans on TV, yeah. much less like queer Asian Americans, much less transgender, gender non-conforming, non-binary folks. So what he was doing was so revolutionary and radical, you know, at the time. Yeah. And, you know, to live a life like that and then to have it completely discredited in his death. So these sausages are actually going to be a Chinese char siu flavor. And I make them with a little three-inch sausage. So it's a chubby little chode. And we tuck them into little steam buns with a little hoisin sauce. I, and, I love uh, that there's a little sexual energy Well, you know, energy we're in making there. sausages. There's yeah. sexual innuendos abound yeah. here. There's I know. Just... You might as well just be upfront about it. Because I mean, I'm not no going to pretend. There's no skirting around it. Unless you're using skirt steak. That's Just. true. <laughs> I know the puns, it's terrible. Yeah, so we're gonna put all of this into our bowl here. I feel like this is such a cool process too because I know like growing up, I was so used to like seeing animals and like the whole food, the whole animal, like whether it was like a vegetable or meat, like I saw the whole thing. It wasn't Process just like- from beginning to end. Yeah, it doesn't it, just magically appear in the supermarket. Yeah. You know, you use nose to tail. It's not like a hip thing. It's just a function of like, you have to use the whole animal. Yeah. It was almost like what, like as people would think how I grew up is like exotic cooking, but I just, I thought like, butter noodles was like, oh, this is different. <laughs> this is the strange thing that you're eating. It looks so yeah. plain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're gonna add some of the rice wine, okay. sesame oil, ginger powder, 
Here we have the five spice. It's a lot of five spice, but it's also a lot of meat. So with this red rice fermented tofu, you kind of just want some of this for color. And then this is a little hoisin sauce for a little sweetness. You have that sort of flavor profile that is very common in Chinese food. And actually, the Chinese colonized Vietnam for many, many years. Yeah. So we have a lot of things that people are like, oh, I thought that was Chinese. I'm like, it's Vietnamese too. Yeah. It really is interesting how, like, the food just naturally starts to blend. Yeah. When people think about sausages, they also think, like, it's super phallic. Yeah. And so for me, as uh, someone who's not a dude, obviously, mm -hmm. or maybe not obvious, but I'm not a dude, um, to be able to, like, take that and, you know, like, I'm really tired of watching kind of bro -y guys with handlebar mustaches talk about meat. Other people can talk about meat and can be experts on that and can actually, like, show you how to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think part of that is queering our understanding of the kitchen, right? And queering mm -hmm. our understanding of, like, who's an expert and, you know, who gets to, who gets to make the food. You want to add all your dry ingredients to the meat so that it absorbs the dry ingredients before you put in the wet ingredients. I just added that red yeast salt so that it's actually gonna start to break the meat down a little bit. I'm just massaging it gently. Would you like to massage oh, the yeah. meat a little bit? These are honey Ooh, granules. This feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of hot, actually. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add the honey granules and you can mix that up so that they're divide it all the way around. I love when you can just really like get your hands like in. Mm -hmm. And this here is a dried soy sauce powder. Why did you choose sausage to honor people? I mean, for me, I started making sausages as an homage to family and friends because, mm -hmm. you know, statues are so last century. Why yeah. not honor your friends with encased meats? Yeah. <laughs> well, I also think there's something really like personal about what you choose to put in your body. Mm -hmm. And that goes like, for food, because you're like eating it, but also like if you think about it sexually too, mm -hmm. like what you put into your body is like very personal or maybe you choose not to put anything yeah. in your body. For me as a performance artist who uses food, you take a risk when you eat something. Mm -hmm. And so you have a completely different experience with the art when you're actually have it, when you ingest it, when you take it into your body. We're gonna mix this nice liquid marinade into here. I think all different spices really kind of can carry a whole memory and can carry nostalgia and can carry a story, which is why I tend to use food as my medium because I can't paint or draw, let's be honest. When did you know that food was your medium? I actually started uh, using food a lot when I was in graduate school. I was doing a lot of performances with food, I was like crocheting and knitting with lemongrass or like other things like that. And my first uh, huge project was I wanted to replicate my dad's work overseeing the dismantling of North Korea's nuclear reactor and my mom's work as a professional pastry chef and combine them together. Mm -hmm. So I built a replica of North Korea's nuclear reactor out of gingerbread. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was about this big, you know, like a to scale model. Yeah. And uh, in the gallery space, we had a performance where we dismantled the reactor for peace and then everyone got to come eat a little bit of the gingerbread to like destroy the oh nuclear my reactor. That is so creative. I, I learned a lot about gingerbread <laughs> that I didn't think <laughs> as a medium I would ever need to know. Now we're gonna cover this and let it marinate in the fridge. You wanna leave it for at least overnight. The longer, the better. All right. This is the meat that's been marinating overnight. All the flavors have soaked in, all the five spice that you smelled. It's in the meat now. Oh my gosh. We're actually gonna grind all of this on a pretty coarse grind here. And let's get our gloves, shall we? Okay. All right. This looks like a powerful machine. It sure is. It's <laughs> one horsepower of uh, meat grinding action. So let's grind some meat. You can just put it all in the top right here. And usually I put my hand in front in case any of the liquid pops out. Oh there my god. There it is. Look at that. Wow. wow. Beautiful, right? Oh my god. And you want to make sure that you alternate some fat, some pork. So you get a nice mix. Now I'm seeing why the fat was in there. Yeah, well. It all makes sense. Sausages require 
quite a bit of fat. I don't know why people think it's a low fat thing. So here we have all the meat ground and you can see the pockets of fat marbling really nicely. At this point, we're gonna lube this tube up a little bit here and you wanna find the end. There's an end. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna slide this on. And you can use your other hand to kind of untangle it a bit as you're sheathing the tube. Oh my gosh, I really see like when you're making sausage, there is really no way around uh, <laughs> the sexual innuendo. Yeah. yeah. Really, I mean, what your friend Chris was doing really was like revolutionary to be making that kind of porn. I feel like there's a stigma around porn and being a sex worker. And then I think when you add in the layer of being queer, it gets even more complex. Yeah, and I mean, just even in terms of representation, how people of color are represented in porn, mm -hmm. that like oftentimes replicates the same stereotypes that we engage with on a regular basis. And think about it, it was the 90s. There was no representation of anyone, <laughs> Asian American, queer or otherwise. So to have porn that actually centered queer and trans people of color is really, you know, was miles ahead. And wasn't feeding into like the stereotypes. Oh yeah. yeah, and just even in terms of talking about sexuality, I think for myself as an Asian American, like we never talked about sex. Yeah. So no. why would you even mention that you're queer? Like yeah. there's no <laughs> sex to be had anywhere, yeah. much less queer sex. And so, you know, to, to hear about something so liberating where people are like thinking in a sex positive way and doing it on camera and it just, my mind was blown. I was like, oh, this is actually a real possibility. It felt really liberating to know that that's, that's possible. Yeah, and that you can have a healthy and positive relationship with sex. I feel the exact same way. It was just like, there's no sex conversation happening in this household. And it really like fueled a lot of shame inside of me where it just like even finding pleasure felt shameful. Right. And I mean, you know, it's a natural part of our bodies and a natural part of being human mm -hmm. and and engaging with people and being intimate. And, you know, I think we're taught not to talk about it. And so to be able to talk about it and in a healthy like way is actually really empowering. Yeah. And to like claim your sexuality and your experience. Yeah. I'm going to have you pack some meat okay, right now. Perfect. Speaking of sexuality. That's, that is what I'm here for. <laughs> meat packing? Yes. Excellent. So we're going to tip this back, and you're going to put this meat by the handful into this. Okay. Nice. I feel like I'm excelling at this process. You are. You're a very, very <laughs> excellent meat packer. Have you done this before? Well. <laughs> I haven't done it in quite this way. <laughs> this actually creates a little vacuum seal here. So what this is doing is it's gonna force the meat out into the casing. You always wanna leave a little bit on the end there. And I'm gonna have my hand here so that I'm not getting too much of an air bubble. Again, this is wildly sexual. Yep. <laughs> what happens here is you're actually gauging both the pressure, because you don't want it to be too much meat that it'll uh, split the casing. It like comes to life. It sure does. <laughs> oh and my gosh. And we're gonna tip this around this way. Let's see. Oh my gosh. <laughs> here we go. Here's our uh, coiled pork. So I'm going to show you how to link it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Usually what you do to link is you're going to measure the sausage that you want, pinch off the ends, and twist them. Okay. We're doing little short chubby chodes for this one because it fits really nicely into the bun. You want to do every other one. So I'm going to measure the same amount as this sausage, pinch okay. off the sides, and then I'm going to turn the next one, because I'm turning them all in the same direction, which makes this one go in the opposite direction. Got it. Does that make sense? So you're twisting every other sausage. You're going to measure, pinch it a little bit so that you can start flipping it around. Oh my God, how do you do this? <laughs> 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 Takes practice. All right, you make it look, you're, I mean, I've just learned it, if something it? looks easy, it's hard. Yeah, well, uh, 10,000 hours, they say, it takes yep. to master something. So 10,000 hours of <laughs> linking sausages. Yeah. Grind stuff, link, repeat. I feel like I'm going to have so much more of an appreciation when I see, like, each link hand yeah. loving. I, I like to say it's, like, you know, lovingly prepared by queer hands in the kitchen. Perfect. Look at that. Yeah. Now you're already a sausage master. I just don't want to break it. I feel Got like it. that. 
That's perfect. Okay. We're gonna take this poker. This is a very important step. You see these little air pockets right mm -hmm. here? That, you wanna get rid of the air pockets. So okay. we actually have to poke and stab each individual sausage. So each sausage is inspected. You see where the air wow. pockets are? You poke them. This also prevents them from exploding uh, when you cook that's them. That's what causes the explosion. It's not the only thing. <laughs> the temperature of the sausage when it hits the tray, when it hits the pan, also makes a difference. Do you want to poke a Sure. Careful not to go all the way through okay. the sausage to poke yourself. Oh, I had no idea that you had to like hand inspect like each one. It also gives the juices an opportunity to come out mm -hmm. so the juices have somewhere to go so that they don't fill up in the sausages as well. We're gonna set these back in the fridge so okay. that they air dry a little bit. You want the casings to dry a little bit and then you also want in between the casings to dry up so that they don't come undone when you're when you're cooking them. Cool. Great, I'm gonna put these in the fridge. All right. These are our sausage that have been linked and air dried in the fridge a little bit. You can see how they dried out a little bit in between each link. Mm -hmm. So this is the easy part. We just cut in between each one. Give them a snip, set oh. them free. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're free. You're free, liberated. The best way to explode a sausage is to put a cold sausage in a hot pan. So a little oil, you don't need a lot because there's a lot of fat in, in the sausages. You just don't want the casings to stick. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna drop these in here. And you wanna turn them a little bit so that they get a nice color all the way around. I know, I, I'm, I'm mixed race, you're mixed race. Mm -hmm. What has it been like for you living your life as a mixed race person? Because I feel like I'm just so hungry for like any stories that I can get about people who are, you know, living their lives with these very intertwined multiple identities. Yeah, I think being mixed race and being queer, growing up I didn't really hear stories about Vietnam that were other than, you know, the Hollywood industry, you know, war movies or speaking about Vietnam in a context of Vietnam. And I think so much for Vietnamese Americans, um, food is that touchstone that reminds you of home, that takes you back to that place that you had to leave and didn't know you'd ever be able to return to. And so I really think that, you know, you can use food as a way to tell those stories. I make a, a performance piece called Mixed Spices where I actually use all the different spices to try and represent people's mixed race identities. Oh, that's so cool. So like, so like what are the spices? Um, there's a Mexerian, which is like a Mexican and Korean spice spices mixed together, so it's like menudo spices, but with the gochujang, blacksican, uh, which is like black and Mexican spices. Um, and, you know, I found it was a way to really, like, represent both the flavors and the, that history and story, but also in a fun way. You can see they're browned on all sides. And look at, see, you didn't even need that much oil because all of the lovely fat is actually cooking the sausages all the way through. Do you want to get our buns ready? Sure. And so these are steamed bao buns that we just uh, quickly steamed uh, in a bamboo steamer on the stove. You are a professional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, these are nice and soft and bouncy. Mm -hmm. There's one. And there we go. I like to serve these with super traditional flavors. Um, so this is just a little bit of hoisin sauce. We're just going to lube it up there. You can make it look a little pretty if you like. We just have some cucumber slices and we're just gonna nestle them into our buns. And then a little bit of the green onions. Look how pretty these are. I know. The little curly cues. If you uh, cut your green onions and just drop them into ice water, they'll curl up like this. Oh, cilantro? Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we have, have to have cilantro. <laughs> we have cilantro I here. I have Look a at that. tattoo of cilantro because that's how much I love cilantro. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to put a little sprig right here. I'm just pulling from the top. You can okay. From anywhere. Yeah, I feel like cilantro is something that people have strong feelings about. You either like really like it or you're like, no. They smell so good. They look so good. All right, time to eat. Yes, my favorite part. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That Berkshire pork. Mm-hmm. Got a little lipstick on mine. <laughs> well, you know. I'm a lipstick lesbian, so. <laughs> I'm a chapstick queer. 
I actually heard that for the first time from a friend. She was like, I'm a chapstick queer. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's a good one. I've never heard that. Yeah, you won't catch me in lipstick. I mean, it might be somebody else's, but that's highly unlikely. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm so glad you enjoy it. Can you taste the five spice? I can. Mm. Wow, this is so good. I've never had a sausage in a bao bun. Bao bun. Yeah, well, and most folks have been sort of serving, you know, pork belly in the bao buns. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you have the char siu pork, or in Vietnamese, we say sar sasu. If you have that in the sausage, you get all of those flavors, but you still get the bite of the sausage casing and the flavors are, I think, a little richer and deeper. Yeah, I've loved hearing about your story and just how you use food as art. I feel like there are a lot of cooks and chefs out there who like obviously use food, but you're really taking it to the next level and making it this like higher form of art, which I think is amazing. For me, queer theory in the kitchen is about pushing boundaries and pushing the envelope and, you know, really taking things that aren't expected and making them happen. And I do that in my art and I do that in the food. And so I think this is a way of queering the kitchen and also queering our concept of, you know, what is performance and what's art and mm -hmm. really an opportunity to tell a story in a different way. There's lots of storytelling uh, techniques and methods, and this is my way of telling a story. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. This was so much fun. Oh, this has just been lovely. Thank you for inviting me to be with you today. <laughs> oh, it always feels weird, just the like silence at the mm. end.